Ladies and gentlemen, King Charlie is in charge now. And this is the woke apocalypse. There is a cis het straight white ray ya 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 male in charge of the UK. He seized power in the UK and this is all over the fucking news. You can't avoid it. And speaking of news, that is the perfect segue into this video's sponsor, Ground News. Ground News is the world's first news comparison platform. Every day they process more than 30,000 news articles, gathering related stories in one place so readers can see which media outlets are reporting on an issue and compare coverage in real time. And that's how I found so many King Charles articles. I mean, I was researching this video and this sponsor reached out and said, hey man, would you like to find out about the news in a more intelligent way? And I'm like, like, yeah, yeah, I would. So I joined Ground News and they're fantastic. See, look, I've searched King Charles and it comes up with all these articles. There's a media bias breakdown. There's a graph that explains the location of coverage about King Charles. It even shows you the last tweet from King Charles. By threading multiple perspectives from thousands of publications through one reliable platform, Ground News frees people from algorithmic constraints, illuminates blind spots and makes media bias explicit. They're on a mission to well inform the world by making an easy for readers to think freely about issues of our times. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been using this app for about a week and it is actually fantastic. It gives you a massive assortment of media, it tells you where it comes from, it tells you how biased it is and it tells you how biased you are based on what you're reading. Ground News. Think freely. Go to ground.news slash bearing to subscribe for unlimited access or check it out for free. Link in the description. Okay, who is King Charlie the Third? Well, here is his totally non-fictional speech from the other day. My lords and members of the House of Commons, I am deeply grateful for the addresses of condolence by the House of Lords and the House of Commons, which so touchingly encompass what our late sovereign, my beloved mother, the Queen, meant to us all. But I'd like to make one thing straight. Charlie's in f***ing charge now, and shit's about to get f***ing real. As I stand before you today, I'd like to address some of the tyrannical shit I'm going to do as king. First off, America, we're taking you back. You c**ts have been free for far too long. I would not have it. Australia, you're going to become a massive f off prison again. F*** you c**ts. India, you're safe. We don't really want you back anyway. Also, I'm bringing that thing back where, like, the king gets to f*** your wife the day you get married, if he wants to. That was a cool rule. Anyway, c**ts, adios. I'm out of here. Oh, so as you can see, this is the woke Apocalypse. Because Charlie is the product of ra 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 racism. I had to do that because of the YouTube algorithms. They don't like it when you say that naughty word. Take this article for example. I'm not going to read it all because it goes for about 6,000 pages. But I'll read you some good bits. The British royal family has turned a blind eye to its ra 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 racist past. Analysis. Queen Elizabeth II never acknowledged the monarchy's historical role in supporting the black slave trade. Human rights activist Peter Tatchell said the system of an inherited head of state is racist by default. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's interview with Oprah highlighted race issues within the royal family. Yeah, okay, I've got some sh** to say on that later. In 2020, the royal family's silence over the Black Lives Matter movement did not go unnoticed, and Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's tell-all interview with Oprah Winfrey in March of 2021 brought to the fore the topic of racism in the monarchy. Oh, come on, I watched that interview. The worst accusation was apparently one of the royals, who is still unnamed, by the way, said, Ooh, what colour do you think the baby will be? And they said that because Meghan Markle is like half black and Harry's obviously British and white. And so they're like, ooh, what colour do you think the baby's going to be? Which is not racist. It's perfectly normal. I have blonde hair and blue eyes. I am super white. My wife has brown hair and brown eyes. My whole family were like, hey, what do you think the baby's going to look like? Turns out she's got blonde hair and blue eyes because I've got super fucking genes. I'm like the Terminator of semen. <laughs> I'm like the colonizer of cum. Bazinga. <laughs> I'm like the enslaver of ejaculation. Bazinga.
<laughs> Harry said racism was a large part of why the couple left the UK. They claim a member of the royal family raised concerns over how dark Archie's skin would be before he was born. And Michael said her treatment in the tabloids, compared to that of Kate Middleton, you know, the hot one, was racist. Yeah, like I said, it wasn't racist. If your missus gets pregnant, your family goes, oh, I wonder what the baby's going to look like. Like I said, my family did that. They're like, you've got blonde hair, blue eyes. She's got... Uh, She's got brown hair, brown eyes. I wonder if it's going to be a member of, of a master race. <laughs> I wonder what it's going to look like. So anyway, shall we take a trip down memory lane? Or historical lane? Because none of us remember this shit. It was hundreds of years ago. Michaela Fryle, Rachi Hoyce, and Taylor Simone Mitchell. Taylor spelt T-A-I-Y-L-E-R, because that's f***ing normal. you got to be special, don't you, Taylor? Go on to whinge about perceived racisms from, like, 500 years ago to prove their point that the British royal family is sister. For starters, Queen Elizabeth I was connected to Britain's slave trade in the 1500s. The monarch publicly supported Captain John Hawkins, who captured 300 Africans and exchanged them for hides, ginger and sugar in 1562. The now late Queen Elizabeth II never publicly acknowledged her ancestors' actions before her death, Thursday, September 8, 2022. Oh, no, she didn't publicly acknowledge something her family did, what, 500 years ago. Imagine that. I mean, I bet my family did some f***ed up shit 500 years ago. Should I come out and apologise for it? No, I'm not going to because I don't know what it was. And even if I did, f*** you. It was 500 years ago. I didn't do it. They did it. So f*** off. Then there was Abdul Karim, the Indian attendant of Queen Victoria. According to The Guardian, the royal household tried everything to displace him because of the colour of his skin. They eventually succeeded, sending him abruptly back to India after the Queen's death. But these incidents aren't just historical. Royal family members have been ignoring accusations of racism since as recently as June 2020, when the Queen failed to respond to accusations that the Royal Honours Medal is highly offensive and resembles the killing of Floyd. What? Wait. We've got to look up this Royal Honours Medal. Okay, on closer inspection, it does kind of resemble the killing of Floyd. But it's a white angel stepping on a black guy's neck. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's pretty f***. But, like, Derek Chauvin wasn't an angel. So, I don't know, that's a weird one. I'm just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> But Kenneth Olisa, the first Black Lord Lieutenant of London, said in an interview that the topic of race became more present among the family after George Floyd's death, NBC News reported in September 21. What the f*** does the British royal family have to do with George Floyd's death? It's just amazing. I mean, later in this article, they go on about, like, how the royal family didn't support Black Lives Matter. Well, Black Lives Matter is an American thing. They're, like, half a f***ing world away from America. What does it have to do with the British royal family? Anyway, the Brits spearheaded the abolition of slavery before anyone else. That is a fact. I mean, they came out with the Slavery Abolition Act in 1833. When was the Emancipation Proclamation? Like 1861, something like that? I don't know. But the Brits spearheaded the abolition of slavery, and there's no doubt about it. In 2005, a then 20-year-old Prince Harry angered the public and politicians after wearing a Nazi costume to a fancy dress party. Oh no! A Nazi costume to a fancy dress party? It was a poor choice of costume and I apologise, Harry said at the time according to the New York Times. The prince issued another apology four years later, saying he was extremely sorry for using a racial slur to address his friend in a military training video. Yeah, about that fancy dress party, I hear it was like a fancy dress party where the theme was come as the most horrible thing you can think of and so he dressed as a nazi i mean it kind of makes sense but the images are everything prince harry is racist because he dressed as a nazi don't worry about context don't worry about anything prince harry dresses as nazi obvious nazi obvious racist in 2017 princess michael of kent wait princess michael of kent made a public apology after she was accused of wearing a racist brooch to lunch with Meghan Markle. Oh, your brooch is so racist. Meanwhile, Queen Elizabeth II's late husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, was known for his controversial sense of humour and often made remarks during royal engagements that landed him in hot water. These have included telling the President of Nigeria that he looked like he was ready for bed. <laughs> when he wore a national dress to meet Prince Philip in 2003 and comparing Ethiopian art to the kind of thing my daughter
daughter would bring back from school art lessons back in 1965. Well, I mean, that's fair enough. It might seem a bit racist, but like, have you ever seen Ethiopian art compared to like classic English art? Can we just call a f***ing spade a spade here? During a visit to China in 1986, he also told a British student that if he stayed much longer, you'll go home with slitty eyes. <laughs> Oh, come on, he's just from an old generation. They used to make those kinds of jokes. Meanwhile, the British monarchy's most well-known tie to racism, the slave trade, is something Queen Elizabeth never acknowledged in 1564. 1564, that's right, they're bitching about 1564. Queen Elizabeth I even contributed a vessel to Hawkins, the first known Englishman to include enslaved Africans as cargo. While Prince Charles, now King Charles III, that old white cis hat racist white male, previously acknowledged the appalling atrocity of the slave trade and the unimaginable suffering it caused, this is something his mother did not publicly comment on. Yeah, because she never commented on fucking anything. She was like, oh, hello, happy bank holiday. She'd comment on like when the Prime Minister changed and shit. I think she did like a Christmas address or a New Year's address, something like that. But she was not political. She did not talk about controversial shit, especially from f***ing 1564. But as royal commentator Christine Meinzer told Insider, the monarchy was instrumental in supporting the slave trade, so Charles's apology does not even come close to making amends for the past. Yeah, like I said, the Brits spearheaded the end of slavery. But it's never gonna be enough. I mean, you must apologize for shit that happened 500 fucking years ago. I wasn't alive, you weren't alive, none of us were alive. I mean, I hate to sound harsh, but just sort of get over it. Anyway, I'm surprised there hasn't been more backlash to this who white patriarchal male taking power, no, 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 seizing power in the UK. Like I said, it's the woke apocalypse, and I expected more salt. I'm actually disappointed there wasn't more salt. But anyway, thanks very much to this video sponsor, Ground News. Go check them out, you won't be disappointed. Anyway, if you've got anything to add, leave a comment below or go to my super duper gay half stepbrother in law's Twitter account, B Skills. That's with three L's and an at at the start. Thanks for for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Ta-ta. Goodbye.